Hey, this is Mike. Hey, this is Kaz, and you are listening to Two Book Wash Knobs, the only watch podcast that knows it's not about what's right, it's about what's fair. You have made it all the way to episode 278. Hello, Michael. I almost you forgot how to... I, I, I feel like I had a moment just now where I... I thought that I forgot how to start the show. Um, Never. And I had a mini panic attack because I saw the clock running. And I was, <laughs> how do I, I have to do how something do, here. So. How do I do? How do I do podcasts? What is a podcast? Honestly, what is a podcast anymore? Because now we have to do it on video. What is a podcast? I know, right? We got into this thinking it would be chill, just some garage band recordings that we slap <laughs> together and it'll be super low maintenance. And then I, oh, I love how I need my podcast on TV. Now I'm a, I'm a content consumer. I need video. <laughs> I love how much it's changed since we've been doing it. I love how fucking old that makes me sound also. And I back in my day, a nickel could get you into the movie theater, some Laffy Taffy and a cab ride back to the city. Like fucking, <laughs> that, that's how I'm talking right now. Honestly. <laughs> And you'd have just enough to get to work the next day. Like, what are you fucking talking about, Granddad? Good Lord, dude. But no, it's good. It's a good time. Hello. This is going to be a ton of fun, everyone. This is, this is, this is, I gotta, I gotta put my pen down. This is a monumental, monumentous, momentous, magnificent occasion. Yeah. This is a, this you got is the a, call. I got the call. <laughs> I got, I got the call. For anyone that's not aware, okay, so this anyone is not aware. This idea of the call is really centered around a very specific. It's actually a smaller, newer brand. I had to write it down. Hold on, it's a brand I think that's kind of taking the world by storm. Uh, it's called Rolex. Okay, so this small brand called Rolex. I'm being an asshole. Basically, the call is the idea that you put yourself on a list for a watch at your Rolex like boutique or AD, and then you know, in like four years, they'll call you. Your watch, yeah. like oh, I got a watch for you because it's it's the wait list. It's the it's the it's the it's the Rolex wait list. And Michael, you star swipe. You got the call. I I, I got the call. It was. <laughs> I never thought it would happen, but uh, I was you offered. Cried. You high fived your wife. You walked out your front door. All your neighbors were clapping for you. Actually, I was right. lying. It was a it was a call for a custom Casio. Uh, <laughs> this will be a totally different episode. That's even okay. better. That's even better. <laughs> yeah it's i can i can talk about it later but it was pretty it was pretty um surprising fascinating and it was also interesting to think about which model i got a call for uh because it was yes, a sports we'll talk about model. that it was a sports yeah. model it wasn't a 32 millimeter uh women's day just with diamonds. you didn't get the 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 cellini call the call for the cellini or cellini no. however you say it but i'll talk about this too i was actually not long before this, I was offered, uh, I think, a 32 millimeter or 34 uh, oyster perpetual or something. The lady was like, yeah, you could take that one today. Thanks. <laughs> the one is t- All right. The one that's boring that's enough. Awesome. The one that's boring enough to where my wife will say, like, what is this? This is dumb and it's small. But that goes, I think that speaks a lot to something that you and I talk about in Rolex a lot. And I'm, I'm super pumped to talk about this. The main, the main topic of the episode is that for a lot of people, a Rolex purchase is really more just about buying a Rolex. Yeah. I got a Rolex. Even if it's like, you know, 25 millimeter lady day just with like chocolate diamonds or whatever. The fuck. I got a Rolex. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I, I think that feeds into the aspect of the whole weird culture around the call. Cause we see, I see posts on Reddit all the time, guys, I got the call. It's like, yeah, you, you got the call for the privilege to spend five digits on pieces of little metal and glass. That's amazing. I'm happy for yeah. you. <laughs> so I don't want to be a dick, but that's fine. But let's do this before we do that. We have to honor tradition. I'm also intentionally trying to keep my voice low because my baby's asleep. Uh, we've honored tradition, Michael, for the 278th time. You want to do an audio wrist check with me? Let's do it. What do you got? All right. I'll go first. Uh, I'm wearing an oldie but a goodie. I'm wearing my Raketa Big Zero. I don't think I've worn it. I might have worn it once while we started doing the show on video. I can't remember, but um, Raketa Big Zero is a very special watch to me, aside from the fact that it is a... Uh, vintage Soviet watch, which helped inform a lot of how I uh, kind of 
curated my own taste in watch collecting aside from that fact it's also a very personal watch for me i think most people in their collections will have some kind of what i'll what i kind of dubbed like a memory watch like that watch that's with you for all your like big life stuff big good stuff bad stuff milestones the brick had a big zero is it for me i've had all kinds of uh i've had all kinds of run-ins with my health while wearing this watch i got married in this watch i proposed in this watch i wore this watch while my son was born um this for me is very much uh um my my memory watch so pretty special to me in regards to the actual um i'll take it off my wrist see i don't think i've had it on the, the if i have i don't remember because so i don't think most people have actually seen this thing obviously it's inverted because my camera's inverted right now so just imagine this with your with your brains just turn the other way and then you'll probably get a pretty good idea it's showing up correctly for me oh really it's um, inverted for me oh never mind must maybe, be maybe maybe it's a setting that you have on on riverside or something probably Either I, way. I love that I, I love that you still have that watch you've been oh, mon- you've been montamaxing for a while uh so. yeah that's a great watch <laughs> That is, that's, that's also very, very, I'm, I'm having a really good time with that watch right now. Um, but you know, Rick had a big zero for me. Uh, vintage Soviet watches have always been a really big cornerstone of my, uh, my foundation for my tastes and predilections and like watch designs and what I try to look for watches that I find are interesting. And so by Soviet watches, I mean, watches generally existing in production from the time, fine time frame in Russia and former Soviet bloc countries, like from 1917 to like 1991, 1992 ish. And so, um, Riketa is still around. I will not talk a lot about that. Cause the last time I talked about Riketa on air, I got very upset because they reintroduced the big zero and like, um, I just it's, don't like it. It's a silly That's watch. A, it's just, it's just, they ruined it. I don't understand why you couldn't just, just do it the way, do it the way God intended. All right. A, <laughs> just keep it the way it was. Um, other vintage Soviet watch brands, this, this Vostok is actually a vintage Soviet uh, 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 watch brand. Not vintage anymore. They're still in production. And so um, it's a very interesting, uh, interesting market. So. But that's what I'm wearing now. Totally a lot of fun. Manual hand wind running the Raketa 2609 um, uh, 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 mechanical movement. It is a three-hander. It is a acrylic dome. Everything on this watch, to my understanding, is original except the acrylic dome that was replaced when I bought it. I have it on a $7 leather strap. And by leather strap, I'm assuming it's made out of recycled nylon couches. It is a $7 leather strap that I got from Amazon. It looks really comfy. So. It's really it's, it's actually worn in really well. <laughs> yeah, it's I was really comfortable. I said something on the last watch review that I did on video. I was talking about comfortable nylon straps. Mm-hmm. At least nylon has to have a certain degree of crappiness, just <laughs> inherent shittiness to the strap, mm-hmm. where the holes stretch and there's some fraying and stuff like that. Because mm-hmm. that is what will just make it fit like a glove, and it looks like mm-hmm. that. What that's what that leather strap has done. It looks very. It's perfect. Comfy. Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 I, I love it. And my wife just texted me that I woke her son up. You're in trubs. <laughs> I'm not You're in trubs. I'm just. I'm just disappointed in myself. <laughs> I feel like you were very quiet. I feel like it's. I thought I was quiet as fuck. Honestly, like I'm just like. I think I will. I'm like. (laughs) I'm like. I'm like. I'm like. I feel like I'm. I'm, I feel like I'm like secretly whispering to like another prisoner through like the bars before the guards like come. I feel like that's how you and I are having this conversation right now. Um, Yeah. Please don't draw too much into the analogy of me being in prison in regards to navigating conversations around my family. It's just the first (laughs) thing I can think of. Hushed, hushed whispers. But no, I'm wearing the Raketa Big Zero. I think it's great. I I am still amazed as to what's happened with this watch in the market right now. Still crazy. It's Price like hundreds wise. of bucks. Like like I've i uh, people still send me links to like check out and they're like, oh, you know, check this link out. It's like three or four hundred dollars. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, just buy a nice Seiko. For we have to develop four hundred dollars, buy a nice Seiko. We have to develop a big zero chat bot. That just Hotline? people, people we write do a 900 it. number. We should do a big zero 900 number being like, being like, being like, be like, be like, Hey, big spender. Do you want me to check out your big zero? <laughs> just like, and they'll, they'll describe it to me. Obviously I have to answer every call. They'll describe it to me and I'll have to, I'll have to verify the authenticity, authenticity of their watch in like a sexy, breathy voice. Hey, yeah. 
I can't do a sexy breathy voice. But you know what I'm trying to say. I gotcha. Not a bad yeah. idea. Yeah. One nine hundred big zero. It actually even works out with the number of letters and the number of numbers you would need. Sounds hot. One, two, three, Z E R O. Big zero. Three, four. So nine hundred three. So one nine hundred big zero. Holy fuck. I have to write this down because I'm gonna forget. <laughs> I'm just going to write down 1900 big zero and see see what my brain thinks of that tomorrow. And I'm like, why the fuck did I write down? You'll see it in four weeks. <laughs> Where was my head at? <laughs> what, what, was, what was I doing? Oh my God. So, That's what I'm wearing. That's what I'm wearing. I'll, um, I'll pass it to you. Yeah, well, I have a, I've got a gaggle of watches. There's a kind of a combined wrist check today. Um, I've, so back at episode... 276 it was we had a we had barry cohen on as a guest and he is the uh the founder and the um uh he's he's the guy that runs pro tech watches and he was also um you know instrumental in uh in the uh the luminox brand he was also the founder of luminox uh so it's a great episode. He's, Definitely go back and check that episode out. That was a ton he, of fun. Yeah, if you're if you're interested in a lot of old school industry uh, history and knowledge to be shared uh, from from an insider and you know what goes into procuring pieces and filling orders and selling watches back in you know the catalog days. Um, you know he said that was that was huge when he was starting up. Um, check out that episode. Uh, but now he runs he runs a brand called ProTech and he sent actually four watches that, that I've been wearing pretty casually. I, I traveled with two of them. Uh, the one that I'm wearing today is the ProTech. Uh, it's the PT 1012 R U S Marine Corps. And let me see if I can share the screen here. Cool. Yeah. So this one is a carbon case. Uh, quartz movement. Can you see this actually? Yep. Cool. So That's this so is, cool. and I, I got it just like this. It's um, quartz movement carbon case with the red accents on the chapter ring, the crown and the strap. Um, the crown looks super grippy. Is it fun to like, is this like, is it super easy to grab that crown? It's really fun to operate these crowns. So yeah, I, yeah. yeah. So I have this one, this one in red, and I'm also, let me see. I think I can also, can I change the tab? Can I change the tab that I'm showing? Share this tab instead. Oh, Share this tab. I love technology. So I also, yeah, dude. So, oh, cool. The, this one, so the, the red US Marine one and this one are the ones that I've been wearing the most. I do like the red accents on the other one. But I think it gets a little, it gets pretty close to, I don't know. It's borderline stolen valor if I'm wearing something that says U.S. Marine Corps on the dial and it's mm. got the the insignia on the case back. So, But I, it's it's a nice, they're both really nice watches. And these two are, are very similar in the sense that it's a, it's a big carbon case, um, quartz and just crazy tritium tubes so it's, it's big but when i was looking at the specs the specs felt or at least they seemed pretty balanced that's not it's not like top heavy is it because that was that was always my concern when i saw it, when it was like i would love to try one of these on one day they barely weigh anything so there's there's oh shit that's right because they're super light yeah yeah so i i think a good way to describe these just it's very similar to wearing a something like a g-shock so it's kind mm -hmm. of Maybe it's more of a highbrow G-Shock. It's a little little fancier, a little bit more for the analog folks. Yeah, um, if you like the the robust reliability of a G-Shock, but you would prefer something a little bit more, um, quote unquote, or logical or analog, yeah, these make a ton of sense. Yeah, so this one, uh, this black one, they do have a, uh, I did also get to spend some time with this one this is the one that i've this is the one that i've been wearing the least so you're you're talking about top heavy this one is because it actually is it's actually steel um so this is oh. this is the same watch with a with a steel case got and, it 
and all of them dude all of them have these crazy like oh yeah that's awesome bezels and what on the carbon ones i think it's i think the carbon ones are 60 click instead of the steel Mm. one but they're all just amazing uh just no nonsense quartz divers however the one that surprised me and i really wasn't um i i wasn't thinking about it too much when i found out that it was being sent to me this is the watch that barry was wearing um when he did the interview with us good he did send this to you okay what's funny is this is the one that interests the hell out of me this one looks so cool yeah so this is this is the model pt3005 this is a titanium field watch of theirs tritium tubes um and i think it's around let's see it's 40 millimeter titanium case and this leather strap is actually very comfortable i find it oh wow. really i find it really annoying when leather straps i think leather straps a lot of times can be overbuilt in so many ways people mm. people will hand make them and think that they need to be super thick uh in order I know to exactly feel what you're talking about high quality but this one it's just the right balance of uh thickness and comfort so mm-hmm. this this thing is pretty rad i think there's no screw down crown on this one yeah there isn't that's the one thing that i'd change Mm -hmm. but it's a yeah it looks like a one position two position crown and yeah that's the one thing i'd probably change about this one but i don't know those are those are the watches i wanted to talk about today and just great titanium you said titanium is, is it super light or is it like too light? Because sometimes, because you know when you pick up a titanium watch and you're just like, ooh. <laughs> um, it's it's surprisingly light. I wouldn't say that yeah. it's too light. I But I, I do think you could just wear this and it would disappear and you'd forget about it. Um, That's what happens with my um, Grand Sago. The green almost reminds titanium. me, the, the green one, the, the green reminds me of the Seiko Your SNK. I think that's why I find oh, it so yeah. charming. <laughs> the color, the color is not too far off. It's like a classic field watch sort of color. If you just didn't want like a black dial watch, you know what I mean? That sort of somewhere olive drab kind of military green. There's a few different variations or takes on that shade of green. So, how is it with the uh, tritium in I- 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 IRL? Oh, dude, it's 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 no joke. It almost feels, I don't know, illegal. I don't know. I think this needs to be regulated somehow. <laughs> it's really bright, it, dude. I mean, actually, isn't it? Is it? Are, are, isn't tritium gas regulated in some capacity? I don't know. I hope so. But um, <laughs> it, it, you know, it just you just never get tired of it because mm. you know I've had I've had marathon watches before and you know, I've sold them and right. you know, I'll start thinking about tritium again and before getting the watch I'll think oh yeah it's going to be really bright when I see it at night but it's. I don't know. I, I, I feel as if you can light up a portion of certain rooms in the house with this at nighttime, just, <laughs> just wearing the watch. It's, it's very, it's very bright. And Hell yeah. just, I, I love what he does with the different colors. Um, on some of the watches, there's just a combination of different colors of the, the tritium gas. And so, you know, it's just a very creative way to, um, kind of write that next chapter after luminox uh for barry yeah everyone definitely check that episode out i remember we were talking about like different colors of tritium and like how you have to have different amounts of material based on the color because some colors aren't as bright as the as other colors and so if you wanted to have like a balanced color output you have to figure out the right ratio and so it's it's it, it was honestly very interesting like it's it's another layer of watch engineering that I think might get taken for granted because you're like, oh, you just put a bunch of gas in that tube and you tape it shut and slap it in the wash. But like, no, it's actually it's actually quite technical, especially when you think about also um, the cost of the product. I mean, both everything you've shown today is between what four and six hundred bucks. Yeah, I think um, That's so cool. I think most of them, both of the composite ones, are four ninety five. 
The steel one is also 495. The one that's a little more is the the field at 525 with the titanium. Mm. So it's just a little pricier. Uh, I don't. I think actually, Protect's most expensive watch is the one that just came out. So they did a version of the um, the U.S. Marine Corps, but with an automatic automatic movement. Automatic, yeah. And I think those come in at six ninety five. So six ninety five really good is their most expensive watch. Yeah. So hell yeah, we're we're. I, I don't. I I don't know if I missed it. Can you actually put it up on your wrist? Because we're because we're wrist bros. Yeah. So this that is, looks great, actually. Jeez. And I actually, so the red is cool. It's a little too, I don't know. It's a little too Miami for me. Sometimes I did, I did take this to Miami. It was kind of fun. <laughs> but uh, the there's something a little more low profile about the black. You know, I think black suits you more. Yeah. So this is yeah. This is probably my my favorite one. How's a this is a technical question. How's your video? Or how's my video for you? Because your video is a little choppy for me. It's good. It may just be Riverside uh, doing its uploading thing. So I'm cool. not too worried. I haven't seen any uh, glitching or whatever. Cool, cool, cool. Sweet, sweet. Te- yeah, technology, good. man. Technology, right? We used, to just, we used to just record a track and then... I mean, well, I used to just record a track and then walk away. And then you had to slave over a hot laptop and actually put the tracks together. So You'd, you'd speak into a phone and then send me a voice note, basically. Yep. I used to record our show on the voice memo app on my iPhone and I would send you like an MP4 and you were like, can you please? No, I, I, no, no, I would say I would send you a random, I had to like convert it to like an MP3 or something like, Oh my God. It was, yeah. I think it was, it was like so the, the Apple format or something and I needed something else. Oh man. <laughs> Those were the days. Those were the days. Those were the days, dude. Good wrist check though. Hell yeah. That's cool. We have totally opposite watches on right now. Yeah, these like these in are every possible sense. I can opposite watches. This is about as close as I could get to you. Which I don't know. This this green one would look good next to that that big zero. Kind of those those are the ones that intrigue me the most, especially because of the titanium thing. So hell yeah, yeah, cool, good stuff. One nine hundred big zero. Just want to just want to put that out there for folks. Steamy. Steamy. <laughs> no, don't see this has no this has no like water gaskets. Like don't don't. <laughs> Don't bring it into a steamy environment. How how well um, does it keep time? Oh, I don't worry about the time when I'm wearing this. <laughs> when I'm wearing this watch, uh, let's just put it this way: if I have it wound and I'm just like wearing it, I can just hear it ticking, and it's ticking very loud and like kind of erratic. Honestly, I probably need someone to look at it. It has a, it has a heart murmur, is what you're describing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has it, it it has a lifestyle based heart murmur. It wasn't born with it, but throughout the course of its life, it seems to have developed it. Nice. So, it might have a family history of it. I'm not too sure. I uh, I used to sort of work with someone who grew up in Russia uh, 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 during the Soviet Union. He was like um, he was like a teenager, I think he was saying, and uh, he was telling me his dad had a raketa. And he was like, it was the worst watch ever. It kept breaking and he kept having to have it fixed. And all the day, it just all was broken. He had it fixed and eventually he got rid of it just because he was tired of having it fixed. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, yeah. It's not a great watch. It's not, it's not, it's not winning any like oral, like orology awards. It's just it was a watch that is a watch that works. You know? Sounds about right. Yeah, sounds about right. But at least he can have it fixed. Yeah. Right. Because around the... who do you trust with that though? I don't know any Spencer Klein <sighs> types, but for uh, there's some people who I know work on Soviet watches, but then at the same time, any watch tech or any um, any there are plenty of watch techs who maybe if they've never looked at a Raketa Big Zero or a Raketa Two Six Zero Nine movement, they could figure it out. The whole point of these movements is that they're supposed to be easy to service. The only way it would become an issue is if I had to have a part replaced, which I don't think I do. Um, mm. I don't think I'm missing any parts. The only thing I could think that this watch possibly needs is a uh, <laughs> a good old spritz of WD forty and uh, you know <laughs> maybe a buff, maybe like a little a little a little buff. I probably I probably need to take it apart and cleaned and then relubed. Honestly, just do that. Just do that yourself. Just pop the bag off and spray with with a keyboard compressed air 
I don't, I don't just... have that. I do have cooking spray in my kitchen. I could just spray it with the cooking spray. That's 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 it's literally lubricant. If it's good enough for my fucking eggs, it's good enough to put in my watch. It works. <laughs> Uh, uh, as a legal disclaimer, please, for the love of fuck, do not spray your watches with cooking spray. I do not need that on my orological conscience. All right. Most watchmakers recommend Pam. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's brand name or nothing, dude. All right. Don't buy that Costco spray shit. You get real Pam. All right. Uh, oh, perfect. God. The cookings with the Costco cooking spray. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what they call it. Get Pam by brand. All right. Oh, God, sorry. Got really worked up there. It's been fun. <laughs> I like this, this episode a, so far. It's going to be a ton of fun. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> it's going to be a ton of fun. I want to transition to the main topic, but again, just a reminder, we don't necessarily do the housekeeping portion of this episode anymore. We talk about tubicwashknobs.com or things that are coming up. Well, what I will encourage everyone to do is uh, actually, you know, actually, this, this is one time I'll say it. Go to tubicwashknobs.com, go to the homepage, scroll down, or just go to tubicwashknobs.com and like wait five seconds. You'll get a pop up to, um, join our newsletter and get notified when the newsletter goes up. The newsletter will have things that get updated on the site, episodes, reviews, news. You've been crushing it with news pieces lately. Also, YouTube video reviews and everything like that will be reflected on there as well. So um, no pressure or obligation. But if you were one of the folks that likes the home, the, the homecoming, the home, uh, the housekeeping segment of the Tupac Watchers podcast, I would just, I would encourage you to go join the newsletter. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Sorry. I'm just kind of worrying about the way I'm showing up because people say that we have faces for radio. Someone did say that. What a fuckhead. Yeah. Who said that? I right? thought it was funny. And then, and it's then I was funny trying... for a second till you really start to like think on it. And then I was trying to sleep the other night and all the <laughs> things that all the mean stuff that people say all day to my face and online. Just, it just comes back in waves. It just comes back, and then you and then you think of the perfect responses to them, but <laughs> only when you're like in bed and like hours removed from the situation, and you're just like, ah, I should have, I should have said no, you, your mother, or like something, you know. But like, it never, it's never in the moment. In the moment, you're more shocked than anything else. It's so, right. It's it's good for us. Good I think our us. faces are fucking fantastic. Honestly, thanks, man. You too. I'm telling you, bro. Um, Let's elegantly transition as I punch my microphone. Let's talk about the big topic. Like, let's you you got the call. You got you were you were you woke up and you had your breakfast, your regular breakfast of um a uh, uh, half dozen oysters on ice and a gray goose and orange juice. You were having your regular morning breakfast. What you- that sounds horrible, dude. I know that sounds <laughs> like cool luxury. That sounds horrible <laughs> you don't like you don't like ocean snot and treejas michael uh, what are you talking about do you well after after being <laughs> vegan for a very long time trying to reintroduce a lot of seafoods just has completely screwed me over just you've never liked seafood though i've never liked it but i've i've had it for a bit you know at at times you know if if i go out to a restaurant or something and then i didn't have any seafood for years and I tried mm-hmm. to introduce some, reintroduce some seafood, and now it's straight up throat closing up, allergic reactions to. So yeah, no, oh, wow. I don't. You're just allergic. Yeah, but that wasn't happening uh, before, so hmm. I don't know. Yeah, so no, no, no ocean snot for me. <laughs> um, but I, I was walking my dog when this happened. That's... Okay, that's I'd, that's that's also cool. That that that, that also works. Yeah, I was walking I was walking the dog with my wife and for some reason I, I just get the phone call and usually I wouldn't answer the phone. And I thought I saw the thing pop up it said Benbridge Jewelers. Benbridge is a is a chain that we have out here much like uh, you'd have mayors where you're at. And mm-hmm. so uh there's there's a location pretty close to to where I work so I pop in there every once in a while. And I talked to, to one of the dudes there. And so actually before, before this happened, the only real transaction that I had with this location was giving them my broken IWC to send out. (laughs) So I remember, yeah, I remember. I think I was pretty cool. He was telling me about how he used to, how IWC was one of the first brands that 
he represented and i think he's he's like the iwc guy in this location and um nice so we we talked for a bit and i i guess i guess there was a degree of relationship building uh, <laughs> because um so let's see actually i let's talk about timing so mm-hmm. it's august 2024 right. i I arranged all of that for the repair back in December 2023. And it was December okay. it was December 2023 when I said um hey I'm here. Uh can I just what's going on with these Rolexes? Like what's happening? Just give me the gist of it. We've been talking for a bit. I, I cuz it's not really a list. It's it's not a sequential waiting list. Oh yeah, we should clarify. It's not like at the top of the list you get it. Yeah, no. Yeah. So there's there's basically just a big there is a list of customers, but it's not sequential. And uh basically I've seen with my own eyes this guy going through the list and just calling folks seeing if they're interested in certain models. And they're not necessarily always high rollers or anything like that, or people that have um, spent a lot of money. You really did. You really did just mention interest at some point. Um, mm. I haven't really nailed down the logic of how they go through which portions of the list and what order, but it's not like okay, the wait the wait for a GMT Master is four years. You will get a call in four years. I just I don't think it's like that. Um, if somebody has, probably roll a D20. I, I don't know what they do. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know it's what they do. Man. It's the only thing I can think of. You just roll, just, you just roll a D20. So plus, plus five for charisma and <laughs> see, who, see who gets it. So the, um, yeah. So at, at that point I, I figured, Hey, I want to see what happens if I register interest for a couple of watches that I didn't really consider super hot at the time Mm -hmm. so the ones that i mentioned to him back in december 2023 were the 36 millimeter rolex explorer the new one nice um the blue and black gmt master with the jubilee the back girl back girl laughed in my face but still wrote it down um and then just just for shits and giggles i said what about the uh, the forty three millimeter Sea Dweller, the newest one with the red text on it and the Cyclops? And he's like, "Yeah, you know, I'll put you down. I'll put you down for that." So that was that was December twenty twenty three, and then uh, just a couple weeks ago, I got the call for that Sea Dweller. And that's not in terms of like list wait times. I've heard it's not bad actually. Yeah, and so the reason. Um, the reason I think it happened, uh, and let me just <laughs> uh, spoiler alert: I did not, uh, I did not take up the offer and uh, buy this. Damn watch. it! As you can God. see, it is, it is just a mere thirteen thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. Um, chump change. Just make coffee at home, dude. <laughs> if you just make coffee at home, <laughs> just stop buying avocado toast. Um, yeah. <laughs> So this watch, first of all, I don't know if you've ever tried one on or seen one of these in person. <laughs> no, I've never tried this watch on. But it is just a massive, massive watch. It's I've super... seen it before, but I've never tried it on. It looks giant. I don't know what the thickness is or if, I don't know, does Rolex list? Oh, let's see, model case. Um, hmm. I don't think they tell you the thickness. Nobody Google That's it? Really... Maybe they're embarrassed about it. They should be. I, they this should is... be fucking embarrassed about that shit. Sea dweller thickness. This please. thing is way too thick. Yeah. Please. Okay. Apparently, I can't spell dweller. I'm really putting that higher education to good use. Sea dweller <laughs> thickness. Uh, this is the 43 millimeter MK1 12660. Yep. That's the one. 15.5 millimeters thick. That is fucking thick. Dude, I'm 5'7", man. I'd I'd look like a clown with this watch, an absolute clown with this watch. So didn't didn't buy it, but 
I, I got the call for it and it's just, I said, no, I said, I almost said the guy's name. I probably shouldn't, but don't, um, say, don't, yeah, don't say his name. Oh, hold, hold, I'm confused here. 15. No, is it 15 or 15 sounds about right. That's what it feels like. 50 thick. Oh no, wait, what? No, that can't be right. That can't be right. <laughs> I don't know. It's, 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 it's gotta be 15. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm on a, I'm on a weird one. 15. It's, it's between 15 and 16. Okay. <laughs> We're good. We, we figured it out. Relatively. We, we relatively figured it out. We narrowed it. To together together yeah together forever for all this is one okay but uh but something so clearly i i was gonna say no um there's just absolutely no way a thirteen thousand dollar watch and even even if i did say yes the the only the only part of my lizard brain that wanted to say yes was uh oh you could resell it or something but then mm-hmm. if you if you look at the the used market for these things, it's actually one of the models uh, that's starting to dip under retail. So it's, it's kind happening. of a na- kind of a nature is healing situation for some Rolex models. Uh, so it's been happening with this one. I've seen the uh, I've seen the Explorer twos, the black ones. Oh yeah. Sometimes the polar sometimes those will actually be available from reputable sellers for under retail so wow this this above retail price on the secondary market thing um it could be it could be correcting itself and honestly I, i probably got the call for this thing because it really in reality is probably not a popular model because i think a lot of folks will say the same thing that i did this is a clown watch this is absolutely <laughs> this is a watch for clowns. <laughs> it's a watch for clowns. Um, Huge apologies if you have that watch <laughs> and listening or, to the show. Or you're like, a, a, I don't know, a Navy SEAL or like <laughs> Blackwater contractor with crazy Yeah, just muscles. someone's listening to the show wearing that watch and you're just like, only an idiot clown would buy this watch. And they look down at their wrist and just like, whoa, oh, did you hear that? Oh, I did hear that. I was like, That's it's not a clown home. watch. It's not a clown. <laughs> Shut up, Dad. <laughs> Shut up, Dad. You don't understand. <laughs> it's not a phase, Dad. It's the uh, call of my people, man. That's but something, great. something inside of me just feels sad because I got the call for a Rolex and I said no. That's the reality of it. <sighs> I'm the, the 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 when you were telling me this story originally, the first thing I thought of, and I wanted to save it for the show, is what would you have said yes to? Would you have said no to anything? Oh, dude! If any he, of those three options? If he said, "I have a thirty-six uh, Explorer One," or or the GMT Master, I'm like, I'm there within the yeah. hour. I'll be so. like, "Honey, take the dog. I'm walking to the car. See ya." <laughs> <laughs> See ya. <laughs> like a hundred, a hundred percent. Those. Hell if, yeah. if I gave him three, if it were any of those two, I would have, I would have really said yes. Yeah. So, 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 so this. If I'm playing the okay, if I'm just playing numbers and numbers on paper, statistically you had a higher probability of saying yes, but in reality for the market, it was a lower probability because those so the so the back girl, uh, I've only seen one back girl model in my entire life, and it was from someone who bought it before things got crazy. Yeah. And um the thirty six millimeter uh, uh 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 explorer one is just it's fucking awesome. So and everyone knows it's an awesome watch, the newer one. Well, that was also one of the um, one of the reasons I, I had him register that one as an interest of mine is because I mm-hmm. figured it'll be it's going to be softer than Submariners because everybody wants a Submariner or a GMT right. Master. So in my head, I figured, oh, it would be more realistic to get a call for this Sea Dweller or something like the 36 millimeter um, Explorer. Unfortunately, it was for the Sea Dweller. Uh, and I wouldn't even be able to flip it for all that much. So I don't know. And I also don't want, I don't know if I want to contribute to that problem. So mm. um, now one thing that I'm, I'm second guessing myself now because like, Oh, if I did scrounge up money for that somehow, like, I don't know, sell some other watches or dip into savings which you probably shouldn't do for a $13,000 watch probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> would I then have more 
purchase history to uh i don't know carry some carry some deeper authority when i walk in there that, that's what they say if you're not familiar with the the toxic nuances of the list is that if you have if you have a, a series of watches which, which you've expressed interest in like michael said he did um with that place that he was at you have to build a rapport and a purchase history before you get more in-demand models so in essence if you want to buy a 10 or fifteen thousand dollar watch you may have to spend I don't know, twenty thousand dollars first on three watches you kind of sort of want, maybe a little bit, to get the privilege <laughs> of buying the other watch. That's that's the idea yeah, that gets know, expressed a lot. I don't know how true I don't know how true that is for every location also because I, I think, think it varies. I think some places just want to see some sort of history. So I think I I had some you know, they're just line item transactions. Oh, this guy, um, I think I bought an IWC strap from them at one point, And then I also had them arrange the warranty repair one time. And mm. this didn't even happen. Oh, hmm. so I have to be honest between December, 2023 and now at a different location, but they can still see that history. I did buy my wife a piece of jewelry. That probably helped. It probably helped, but mm -hmm. um, you know, that's purchase history. It's not. It's not like I bought a. You know, I just bought a date just for for the purchase history. <laughs> you know, it, wasn't, it wasn't anything like like that. It was a. It was like a kind of small little bracelet thing. Um, I still purchase. I mean, like I'm, I'm. I'm. I. I would imagine that would have to influence. When they look at your like uh, uh, history as a, a, a as like a customer at the store, and they can see all your past purchases, like yeah, why not? You know, I mean, for that, I'll just go in there and buy I don't know forty Tissots, and then <laughs> <laughs> listen. Look at everything I bought. That whole case of Tissots, bag them up. I'll take them. <laughs> this guy's a high roller. This guy's, um, this guy's a high roller. He just bought three thousand dollars worth of Tissots. Yeah. So I, I, after all of that, I actually, I ended up going in there. I went there to that location after, and, um, I just wanted to see what they had. And I wanted to talk to somebody about the call and the watch and all everything. There was no sea dweller in the case. So I guess some person decided to take it. Someone got it. Someone got it. Good for them. Um, and I did, I did kind of reiterate you know, hey, those other two watches that you have listed for me, still, I believe in miracles. Yeah, uh, man. <laughs> I told, you know, and he 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 did laugh again uh, when I mentioned the back girl, and I said, you know what, man, I believe in you. You can do anything. In my eyes. I believe, I believe, <laughs> uh, yeah, I believe in miracles. I also believe in the power of David S W. How often do you check David S W. dot com? Oh, so I ha I only have. I only have three bookmarks on my browser. I know people are really bookmark serious and they categorize them. And they have folders for finance, blah, 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 blah. Right. So I, op I open up my browser. I have three bookmarks. I have All Watch News, which is a watch aggregator. So I wake sure. up and I'm like, okay, what's happening today? What can we talk about on the site? I have YouTube and I have David SW. It's just, <laughs> that's part of what I do. And I have, uh, let's see if I can actually... Let's see if I can get it here. Um, so on my phone, I created a, a home screen button button there. Just That's for, awesome. So just if I want to check the, uh, you know, the new arrivals. Yeah, what one hundred percent? That's amazing. I'm kicking myself. He had a he had a on bracelet, uh, Omega Railmaster. No box or papers, and obviously it's real. I trust that store, so obviously it's real. It was like the best price I've ever seen that watch at. It was like I think like thirty three or thirty four hundred or something like that, or it might was have it been the a blue bit one, lower. the blue jean. It was one? the blue one. It was it was literally, it was literally exactly like the exact one I wanted. Nice man. No, it was like twenty nine. I remember that it was like tw because it didn't have box or papers or something like that. But it's gone. You now. sure it's still not there? Uh, that's not going to last there if it's twenty nine. I I looked the other day. There's a cool old Seamaster chronograph. 
Um, he's got a lot of no time to dies. There's, <laughs> there is one, um, the blue jean one, but it's on the blue jean strap. And it's on the strap. Yeah. That one is, is that one 34? That one is 36 75. Yeah. The other one was a few hundred cheaper, I remember, which is what, which is what was really funny to me. Uh, the only thing I could think of is the difference is that I think this one has uh, box and papers, or like it's the warranty card. This one has a warranty card, so I guess that influences the price. The other one didn't have the warranty card, which is a, which is why I think it was so affordable. Affordable. That's twenty nine hundred. That kind of sucks, though, man, because the warranty card is the most important thing. Really. Um, I mean, I don't know what it was like for you when you did your Grand Seiko servicing, or um, or the um, but with uh, with the IWC, I just was walking there with the watch and that warranty mm-hmm. card, and that's what they need to see if it's um, if it's still under warranty for a, basically a free repair. Neither um, of my watches are under warranty. None of your watches are under warranty. None of those two that you just mentioned. <laughs> Oh yeah, because uh, the Seamaster's older. The Seamaster's old, and the Grand Seiko I brought from Seiya Japan, so I think it might I I might have been able to do like a warranty. Well, no, actually, I did do it through Grand Seiko. I walked into the fucking Grand Seiko brick and mortar in New York City. You just throw the watch at their head, and I just gave them a watch with a post-it note on it that said "Mines" with a Z, and I just walked <laughs> out. <laughs> I didn't Kaz, even think Taz's watch. <laughs> Kaz, who the fuck is Kaz? <laughs> what is this shit? <laughs> uh, no, I didn't even think to do the. War- I'm not intelligent. I didn't even think. I, I I also bought the watch in 2019 or 2020. Hmm. So I don't know how long the warranties last for, but no, my Seamaster, like, no, it's like 800 bucks uh, to get that yeah. thing serviced and cleaned up and get the bracelet fixed and. They had to change the crown out and everything like that. So, but and it's super, they had to put, super fresh now, though, right? Oh, it's so it's beautiful. They changed yes. the hands. They had to put new hands on there. And what's amazing is they gave me all the old parts. They actually cool. let me keep all the old parts. That's cool. It's cool as hell. I'll you see stop. that new? You see that new Seamaster that came out? So Daniel Craig is teasing another another the no date on mesh. Yeah. Do you think he? I mean, he has to know. He has to know. Like, like. What happens when he does this? When he wears a watch that's not supposed to be in existence? Well, I think I think he does it. Um, I probably look really funny trying to type now. Uh, You're fine. Are you trying to like? Are you trying to like maneuver around your recording setup? <laughs> yeah, I I will have a proper setup one day. Um, You're fine. Let's see. It was it was at the Olympics, and I think there's just a really funny photo. Um, I just want to share right now. Yeah, man. this this thing was making the rounds. Um, here we go. So here he is wearing the uh, the Seamaster. By the mm-hmm. way, I just I want to talk about this photo because this looks like a man impersonating James Bond. If you <laughs> because because the land the laminate thing is just it's just a photo of James Bond, and <laughs> this guy is. <laughs> Like they took it's like his James Bond headshot. Yeah, I feel like they took this from the I don't know a prop in the movie or something. That's uh, actually so fucking hilarious. This is I, He's I just, just cosplaying as himself. I really enjoy enjoy this photo, but um, yeah, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of excited about something like this. I don't know. Mm. Let's that's see. Pretty, that's pretty sweet because it's I know cool. they did they did the 60th anniversary the the blue one but it had that big 60 at 12 o'clock on the bezel and i I don't know i wasn't a fan (laughs) of that um so this is this is pretty dang and i love i love that they're going back to the um the skinny waves kind of kind of Mm -hmm. like what's on your your seamaster yeah the deep cut had its time you know yeah but yeah that's the story i um (laughs) i got the call for a rolex i said no and then I gave them a Panerai to uh, to have some some work done. So I said no to How a Rolex. How your Panerai? It's gone. It's not with me. Is it? Did you sell it? No, I didn't sell it. I didn't sell it. I um I gave it to them for a 
for just warranty servicing. Mm, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I uh I love so it's, so if you're not familiar with 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 Panerai or I mean you you might be familiar with the name but just a little bit of just the 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 collector world in watches around Panerai is so interesting. It is a little polemic, it's a little dividing for lots of reasons, some of them justified, some of them not so justified, but this idea of of people generally tend to not look down on Panerai's but they don't take it as seriously as something like an Omega a lot of times, depending on the situation, because there, yeah. actually, there actually has been a lot of history of movement quality issues or the provenance of the idea of an Italian brand, but it's not really an Italian brand anymore, blah, 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 but they still have a brick and mortar. And where is it? Florence? Firenze? Firenze? Where is it? Yeah. Yep. That's where but I got what I, what I love about all of that is across the spectrum of watches that you have owned, the Panerai is giving you the least amount of problems. Yep, it has been the most <laughs> rock. You're too. You have. I mean, you're jinxed with tutors. I don't know what that is all about, but you have not had great luck with tutors. Omega, right? IWC. Yep. You know it's Panerai's funny. It's been fine. The the Panerai has just has never let me down. I don't know, right? and it's technically the first. It's the first set of models. Uh, is the refresh? Oh, those new ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So it is. They refreshed the base Luminor series in tw- either twenty, I think it's twenty eighteen, actually twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen. S I H H. They refreshed those, and they said they took away the Unitas movements. So, like the Pam 005 that you like, that mm-hmm. would have been the last one before mine came in with an in-house movement. Uh, some people debate how in-house it is, um, but whatever's in there works like a charm, man. And it, yeah. you know, it's. I gave it to the guy, and he's like, "It was kind of funny." He said, "All right, so what's wrong with it?" And I said, "Nothing. I just want it to get looked at, and because it's, it's time. Had it, it's time for had it since, servicing." Yeah, I've had it since 2019. He's like, "Right, but we have to tell him something, you know." I was just like, dude, I don't know what to tell you. I'm just trying to be proactive and take care of my watch. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just say general just, servicing. Just, just, I just need someone to look at it. You know what yeah, I mean? yeah. I, I'll, you know, I think we just ended up writing evaluate or something, and yeah, I don't know. They they might just take it apart, and I, I I think if you write evaluate, they'll still take it apart, lube it up, and whatever. They'll sp- okay. they'll spray the Italian version of cooking spray. Inside your watch, it's probably. Yeah. I don't know what that would be. I don't know anything. They'll about. open it up and go, "Mamma mia!" and they'll just. Mamma mia! And just like, <laughs> we're gonna get a lot of angry emails now. Send it. Send it back to my. <laughs> like, send it uh, back to my. Like, it's perfect. You get it back, and you're just like, "Why does it smell like pasta primavera? Like, what is wrong with my watch? Like, oh, that's just <laughs> that's they they spritz that shit. They spritz it when it leaves when it leaves the the workshop. So you know it was in Italy. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, everyone. Um, what was I gonna say those new ones? <laughs> this is great. Those new ones that's the that's when they bump down the water resistance to 100, right? Oh, yeah, I think it's something thing. else. No, you're right. right. Those, those something people got upset about. Um, yeah, so I remember that. Whatever it was to 100 meters, it's been fine. It's just it goes into the pool with me. Um, there you go. Every once in a while, so you know what's we'll so see. funny? Can't... Oh, sorry. No, just well, we'll see. We'll see when it comes back. I don't know. I love that that's been like. That's been that's that's been the that's been your rock. That's been the rock of your collection, essentially. Yeah. You know that I mean? the Other than the Doxa, I, I do count the 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 the, the Doxa as well. Um, I have a funny pool watch story. Uh, we did a little bit of a uh, sort of trip vacation, and um, with 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 the baby and my wife and I, and uh, I was I was I was in the water, and I took I took the Manta Triumph with me. Screw down case back. Screw down crown. I. I didn't wear it in the water. I just instinctively took it off my wrist. I didn't realize until I was in the water. I'm like, why did I take my watch off? Damn big zero has been conditioned to just assume <laughs> any any sense of moisture will just melt melt the watch. <laughs> yeah, that Monte can handle a pool, I'm sure. That Monte can absolutely handle the pool. I was talking to um I was actually emailing back and forth with um Justin over at Monte. I was asking him like, I'm like, hey, I'm in Florida. It's like ninety-five degrees. 
Okay, any rubber straps fit on the Monta Triumph? Because I would love to put this thing on a rubber strap. And so he was kind of sharing um, some options and things like that. So keep an eye out. I might, I might try out. I might try this thing out on a rubber strap, which might be sacrilege, considering the bracelet is such uh, uh, such an anchor of the watch, like 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 an anchor of the core set of features of the watch. But I think it could be fun on like a rubber yeah. strap, you know. So is it something like the Everest straps that would fit yeah, onto it? Exactly. I, I I asked him if there were any Everest strap models, um, nice. you know, for obvious reasons that would fit on that. He shared a couple options and things like that. I'm not going to be able to color match the green, so I might just do like the black one or something like that. Oh, black would be nice. That'd be cool. Black you know? would be nice with that green. I like mm-hmm. that. So we'll see. Sweet. We'll see. And then I get to share my experience with one of the Everest uh, 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 watch straps. I don't think I've personally have been able to talk about that because I've never had personal experience with um, those Everest straps before. I think people who've written for the com site have, I think, and they've talked about it, but I've never personally um, had experience. Yeah. So that'd be cool. I have to look, in, I have to look into that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, that's the story. I, I think it would be cool. Yeah. I said, I said no to a Rolex. You know, I mean, not it's... a hard Rolex to say no to. Again, no offense if you have that Rolex on your wrist currently right now, and you're in the <laughs> middle of your, of your i i uh, if you're in your of your Apple Tunes, Apple iTunes review. Uh, please select all and delete, cancel. Do not write it. <laughs> five stars. <laughs> five stars. Five stars. No. Five stars. No response. Um, let's see. Let's see how long they have you waiting for. Either the bad girl. Um, can I tell you a funny story about the background that I promise I'll let you go? No, yeah, please tell me. The person that I met who had that watch was not necessarily what I would call a hardcore watch enthusiast. It was someone that I used to work with. Um, uh, uh, he, he, he got that watch because he actually saw it in in uh, uh, in the store, like in a brick and mortar local to, to him where he was at the, at the time. And uh, he just knew it was a GMT master and he heard people... He heard people call it the Batman. He didn't realize the nuances with the bracelet differences and the Jubilee and everything like that. And uh, and he got that watch and he was so pumped. And then he, sh- he showed it to friends of his who were into watch. He's like, oh, guys, I found a Batman. And then they're, just like, they're like, oh, no, that's the Jubilee bracelet. That's the bad girl. And he was so upset. Really? He felt, he felt a little emasculated because it was called the Bat Girl. I'll wear the Bat Girl all day. I don't give a shit. How, ter- <laughs> how terrifically <laughs> fragile of you. <laughs> yeah, I would wear the ready to wear the back roll all day, dude. Fuck that. I, I actually think the Jubilee looks better than the than the oyster with that just big old polished center link. So yeah. Oh yeah. I, yeah. So I thought oh, you get a kick out of that. I don't know. I don't know if I ever told you that. He, he's like he. Uh, yeah, he's just like ah, I felt kind of world, you know, weird. Like Batgirl is kind of for the Batman's, like the girl thing's kind of weird. But you know, but I still wear it from time to time, and I'm like, well, you're very uninteresting to me. But this is fascinating. So. Yeah, but that's, I mean, that, all right, that's like Seiko Turtle. It's not on Rolex's website as Batgirl. You know, <laughs> that's just a really inside but baseball. It's what way people of... think. This goes back to the, the Rolex lifestyle idea. It's what people think because he was, in, he was approaching this conversation, ready to tell his weird friends, guys, I got a Rolex Batman. Look at that. Like, oh, that's cool. That's the Batgirl. Oh, God. It's not cooties. Even, I think it was a cooties what, response. It's not even what people think. It's like what watch nerds think. It's like <laughs> barely people. You heard it here, folks. Watch nerds are not people. <laughs> you, can, you, can quote, you can quote Michael and I on that. Please, for God's sakes, don't. Um, this is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be it. This, this is good. This is classic TVWS. Yeah, it's fun. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. It's fun. But yeah, no, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, uh, I will wait with bated breath. I will watch your, I'll watch your progress with great interest, Michael. Yeah. In regards to your, your Ben Bridge phone calls. Maybe it's, it'll be like a dog that finally catches the car and then I don't know what to do. You just don't know what to do. You, I'll, I'll tell you what to do. You open your wallet, take out your card and you swipe. And you yeah. F- Figure it out later. You put, the piece, you put the pieces together later. And I get yelled at a lot. <laughs> <sighs> That'll be fun. Maybe preemptively have the conversation with your wife being like, be like, someday at some time, 
I will be called upon to spend an inordinate amount of money yeah. on a watch. I think she knows because that one for sure is it's just I think people are paying almost 20 20k plus being basically buying the watch twice to yeah. just to have it. Um has she has she seen the watch? Does she have like at least like aesthetic approval like oh yeah that's a beautiful watch? I think she has seen it. I think she knows that I that I that I like that one or, or just one of the GMTs, you know, whether it's the, the blue and black or the, the red and blue one, which, you know what, you know what watch my wife doesn't bring up a lot of, sorry, I dropped something. My wife doesn't bring up a lot of watches to me, but every now and then she will ask me about, this is the only one she'll ask me about this watch. And she'll ask me if I'm going to get it or if I have any interest in getting it. Do you know what that watch is? No. Grand Seiko snowflake. How funny is that? She really likes that watch. There's a better one now. I think that is more appropriate for our wrists. As, as you. How do you mean? As you. Oh, the quartz brother. one. The the new the new quartz one. Oh, grill. and it's thirty seven. It's thirty seven, and it's cheaper. Yeah, and it is a snowflake, but it's not the spring drive, which she probably no, no, doesn't. No, it's you know. Yeah. Does she well, think I? Mean, I does hmm? she think oh a spring driver is it like oh the snowflake is really nice? Snowflake is really nice. Yeah, she, she's not drawn to the spring drive or anything. No, I, I'm, I'm. It's not disenchanted. I, I still think as a piece of, as a, as as an additional iteration on kind of pushing the bounds or expanding on the bounds of like orological practices and mechanical timekeeping technology. I think the spring drive is very interesting. I don't have as large or as deep a desire as I had before to own a spring drive, I'm honestly way more into the quartz than the 9F quartz movements. I love my 9F82 Grand Seiko quartz, my SBG V233. I think that thing for, for, for me is personally way more interesting than a spring drive. So I don't know. I, I also just feel like now that Grand Seiko's caught on to like the throaty neck beard infatuation with the spring drive, spring drives are just so expensive, right? Yeah. Yeah, this for is sure. Crazy expensive. So, which quartz movement is in that uh, Grand Seiko? Dude, actually, I think it's literally. I think it's literally your watch with a snowflake dial. So I think. Quartz. I think that might be it. There's my, an article on our website. F- which website is that, Michael? Is that twobrokewatchnobs.com? <laughs> twobrokewatchnobs.com. Everyone, go twobrokewatchnobs.com and read about the SBGX three five five. Uh oh, it's even titanium. Yes. Yes, sir. Come on. 30, now. 37 millimeters. Oh, I'll it is at... the 9F62. That is not what I have. Yeah, so whatever that is. Oh, because it's a smaller watch too. My watch is uh 40 millimeters. Mm. Huh. Let me read about this movement. How much yeah, is that's... this watch? 3,800. It's a little high. It's a little much. It's gorgeous, though. Not as much as a, not as much as a spring drive, but... It's like 6,000, I think, now. Yeah, something right? around there. Something like that. Especially after especially after the Grand Seiko logo change when they did a second version of the, of the, 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 the spring drive um, snowflake, so... I like how we were both looking at the same watch and I was looking at it at a different computer and none of us decided to share our screen for the audience. Yeah, suck it, audience. <laughs> if you listen to this, if you listen, just, just look at our expressions. Look at, you get to look at us reacting to uh, both of our different screens. On, uh, I, think we got, I think we got very excited to just look up that watch. But yeah, sorry, we probably should have turned our... Um, well, I hope you all liked staring at the side of each of our faces. Yeah, I think it's still entertaining. <laughs> So here, let's 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 do this. This is a ton of fun. I'm I am glad you had as a as a as a as a as a as a, a watch journalist and as my as my orological brother and my Eskimo wrist bro. I'm glad you had the experience of getting the phone call uh, and getting to say no. I'm sure that was empowering in its own interesting way. You know what I mean? Um, I don't need right? you. Uh, oh that's great i don't fucking need you and your deep sea dweller all right 
I need wherever Daniel, it's called. I need Daniel Craig to come over to my house and I serve want Daniel tea. Craig dressed as a DHL driver trying to pretend to be himself to bring me the watch. <laughs> All right. That's <laughs> That's what I want. I want Daniel Craig DHL fake Bond driver. Okay. That's what that photo is. It's really funny. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> That's just a man trying to enjoy some 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 physical competition. Yeah. And the world is just like just looking at his wrist. Tell yeah. Me, this has been a ton of fun though. Um, episode 270 of the Two Book Wash Knobs podcast. Everyone go and check out the website, twobookwashknobs.com. Go and check out our um, YouTube. Try to periodically put uh, video reviews up on there as well. In addition to that, I highly suggest you sign up for the Two Book Wash newsletter. You can find it as well on the Two Book Wash website. Um, with that said, uh, let us know your thoughts on the show. You can, uh, how, what's the best way for people to tell us their thoughts on, their thoughts on the show? We DHL. don't really have a good way. DHL. <laughs> you can write, you can, you can write your fucking thought in a post-it note and then spend forty five ninety five to DHL next day airship it to wherever you live, to wherever we live, which will be interesting considering Michael and I are in two completely opposite states. That'll keep it interesting. <laughs> Yeah. We'll see. We'll see who gets which review, but um, <laughs> you can let us know on Instagram your thoughts on the show. You this can also episode, reach out. To, this hmm? episode brought to you by the DHL affiliate this... influencer program. <laughs> if they had one, that would be really fucking funny. Actually, how would yeah. you even keep track? Oh, we'll, we'll figure it out. But he, he, either way, you can let us know your thoughts. Um, you can email us tbws.contact at gmail.com that email again is tbws.contact at gmail.com what am i doing let us know your thoughts on the you on youtube on the in the in the youtube comments the youtube portion of this video uh of this episode will also go out so let us know on the youtube comments as well if there's anything else you'd want to talk about in a future episode definitely let us know otherwise we're going to keep doing our thing with that michael is there anything else that i'm forgetting i think that's everything um all right is it that time is it that that sad time time? (laughs) Go make fun of our faces. My name is Mike. <laughs> and this is Kaz. You have been listening to Two Book Watch Snobs. Later. <laughs>